I've waited more than two years for this to show up in my mailbox. This is the world's first modular multi-tool system made by Goat Tools. And it could actually be the game changer that really moves the entire industry forward, possibly. But either way, we're gonna take our very first look today and see what the Goat Tool is all about. Okay, we are gonna try not to waste any time with this review. We're gonna go right in, starting with the sheath. This is gonna be a molly capable sheath, and you can also use it horizontal carry. So you would tuck this in underneath, pin it, and then you can use it horizontal. So that's actually a really nice addition. On this side, we actually have Velcro. We have two elastic straps, one on either side. And then on the inside, we have more elastic for bits or other items. I'll play with this at a later time. We'll make a kit around this tool. Probably a great place also to put the spare implements. We'll talk about that as well. Let's get right to the good part, the GOAT tool itself. Let's do a quick walk around, shall we? Because I have to admit, um, the quality of the shots on this, not my favorite thing. I would love to have seen some more high res shots, but yeah, it looks awesome. And uh, let's, before we open up the implementation, let's go ahead and get some stats on it. What we're gonna do is hopefully we're gonna do stats. We're going to talk about what this tool is and then we're gonna do implementation and then comparison. And then we'll also in throw these in later throughout the whole thing. So these are other parts that you can interchange with the inner implements. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to this, don't worry. Starting with the S35 non-locking blade. But anyway, let's go ahead and get some basic stats. Let's start with the weight. Um, this is actually, I mean, if what they quoted me is real, I mean, I'm gonna be really excited. Let's, let's actually see if it's true. 7.56. So that is exactly what they said it was. Um, and that is very exciting. Let me explain. Um, so let's, this is the one, we're gonna do some comparisons in this way so you can understand from a context perspective. This is a Leatherman Wave, 8.4 ounces. So about an ounce heavier. The Leatherman Signal, 7.58, almost exactly the same. MX Clip, my current carry, 7.6, just slightly heavier. Okay. So weight is really, really good for a full-sized multi-tool. Very happy about that. Let's continue. All right, let's start with some dimensions. So width of the actual frame itself is 6.46 inches. It's going to be, give or take, one and a half, one, uh, one and a quarter inches. Let's see it, try it over here. 1.2, okay, so there you go. That's that's about it. Now let's see, let me just double check this. So what do you say, 0.64, Leatherman Wave. Okay, wait, hold on a second. 0.69, just 0.7, give or take, depending on where you're measuring. Some is 0.7. So it's also narrower, although I think when you include the pins, let me just re-zero the, yeah, okay, that's not what I want to do. I think it's going to be bigger when you include the screws. Yeah, figured that. But here's the cool part. With the, with the scales, funny enough, they may not actually increase the diameter, like the uh, diameter, increase the width of this tool because they include recessed screws. So making it about the same as the screws themselves are above the frame. So we'll definitely play with that. Nice dimensions, like not an ultra thick piece. And I've already been able to carry the wave many times without any issues. Good stuff. Okay, so some basic stats. We also should talk about length, right? Where is my ruler? Um, I'm gonna actually just put the length up here so we can move on. All right, so all in all, pretty cool. Let's get to the implementation. Let's start from the outside. This plier head on the back 
is actually designed to have a hammering end. This is actually incorporated in, I wouldn't call it hammering. I would say the same thing is true with the, sig with the uh, signal. These are persuaders. They're designed for using to get tap things into place without damaging your multi-tool. They are not a replacement for a hammer. They are decent in a pinch, say putting in some wall fixtures that you need to hang paintings or something along those lines, okay? That's what it's there for. They're useful, but they are not technically hammer replacements. That's my spiel. All right, now let's get to the pliers. I wanna start with the pliers. Okay, so the very first thing I noticed when I pulled this out, and I did play with it for a few minutes before I showed it on camera, is that this is spring-loaded, and I didn't know they were making them spring-loaded. I'm not complaining about it. It's actually kind of awesome. And if they're able to do that without compromising on strength, I'm for it. Now, because of their warranty, I really don't care. I'm very, I'm actually happy about it because of their warranty. I think that that actually makes up for any concerns that I have. But yeah, spring loaded. That's not the wave and the, the action is great. One finger, no problem. Now also notice the cutters here. They're triangular cutters, but they're not like the ones we have on the Gerber. These are not carbide. They are hardened steel. So in addition to being basically three sets, because you can just rotate them, they're also not going to chip and shatter into nothing. You might notice that they have the Torx, I'm oh, sorry, not Torx, uh, Allen wrench here this is a number uh, two millimeter. And since we have it, I want to show you, there is actually a two millimeter wrench right here. And you can actually use this tool to tighten up all the screws on it and to adjust the pocket clip and to ch change out the uh, cutters. So they have a tool for maintaining the tool in the tool. Okay, sorry, so cool. Anyway, move on. Um, so that's really neat. So we have the pair of spring-loaded pliers. They are shorter, they're more blunt nose in nature than even the Leatherman Wave. I kind of like the needle nose pliers. I'm a huge fan of them but I also think from a general perspective that these have their place as well. I think they're gonna work great. Um, they have similar thickness. In fact, let's go ahead and get a thickness since we can. They are quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch. And uh, yeah, pretty much quarter of an inch all the way across. And they're just slightly thinner than the Leatherman Wave. Okay, cool, good to know. Now, uh, let's go to the outside, let's go to the cool stuff. Starting with this side, we have four internal implements and two outer implements. The first one is probably one of my favorite inclusions. What a great idea. That is the X-Acto blade or utility knife blade. Now, all of these tools are locking. You can see they actually capture on both sides with this lock bar. It kind of reminds me a little bit of some of the older multi-tools. There's a lot of them that have used a similar design in locking. So this is a pretty well-established locking mechanism. Locks in. In order to unlock it, you have to press this down like so, or you can actually lift this bar up and either way you can do it. The only thing, and this is what I'm going to say right now, because I already had this experience in just a few minutes. If you do this, make sure you drop the bar before you close the tool. Otherwise, you create an opportunity for the tool to slide out. As long as this is in the up position like this, you have the ability to pull out the tool. And since we have that, we'll go ahead and show you. Just like that. And this is a great example of a tool you would want to take out because having it be very light like this makes it easier to make those precision cuts and to move it around like you would any pen. So I really, really appreciate that. So once again, you just stick it in, you'll find that spot, drop the lock, close it in, boom, there you go. Now let's go to the inner implements. And you can see these are all gonna group, you know, go, come out together. That's just the nature of the beast, okay? You can't have a system like this that isn't A, going to require you to use implementations that are all exactly the same width. That's number one. Uh, thickness, I should say. And you're also going to have the clumping. It's just 
gonna happen. That's just the nature of the beast here. So we have an extra large flathead here with a, I'm not sure what dimension this is. I'll have to put this up on the screen when I find out what it is. And I think this is also a bottle opener. <laughs> nice way to integrate it actually. Um, there is going to be a flathead here with a hex driver. A number, oh, so this is a two millimeter uh, Allen key. And then we also have a reamer. Now this is not a reamer all, it is a reamer, which means that it is there mostly for drilling holes. And I gotta say, it's actually not that sharp. Um, mixed feelings about that. I kind of wish it was a little sharper, but hey, that's an easy thing to fix. So there you go. Press that down to unlock. Now I noticed here, there's a little indentation to allow that to occur much, much easier to press down. It's gonna be a little different on the other side. Get to that. So on the other side, we have a full-size scissor and a full-sized blade and a full-sized hex bit driver. So let's start with the blade. Oh, whoops, I forgot. Uh, I was just playing with this. Let, let, me, let me take this out. But you know, we'll go with it. It's a mistake made, it happens. So I wanna show you that, but I didn't wanna show you that right away. Let me start by putting back in the standard blade like so, which you can see is very easy to change out. So there we go, standard blade. Ha ha, nothing happened. You didn't see anything. So locking, locking blade, locks in here, no problem. Great, and actually what's cool is I can actually use uh, one hand to lock and unlock this knife blade. Press down here, like so, until it releases and then close it. That's cool, all right? Now, I did get an S35 VN non-locking blade. Very cool. Uh, at this point, I think that this makes it the best steel you can get in a multi-tool. I would argue that S35 is better than S30B. Personally, it's a little bit tougher. I think that matters more in a multi-tool than it does in other places. Just my opinion. Okay, so since we already have it, let's go ahead and do it. Um, embarrassing. Uh, so I, you can unlock it like I showed you here, take out the blade and you can see the difference here is the, uh, there's rounded versus pointed. Now I get this in between the, um, the lock mechanism and this pull the bar down and there you go. Now we have a non-locking slip joint blade. Oh, I just put the, <laughs> I just put the same one back in. Everyone's probably screaming in the camera going, he just put the same one back in. No, yeah, I did that. Okay, whatever. Ha ha, funny, funny, funny. Yeah, what, whatever. That's what happens when you just want to try to get it done. Okay, so now we have a non-locking slip joint blade. Nothing happened. Okay, non-locking slip joint S35VN. So if you live in the UK or anywhere where they do not do not allow locking blades, guess what? You have an option. And you don't have to just get an S35. They have, um, I believe, regu the regular steel. I can't remember the exact steel that they're using. I'll put it up here. Um, for $12, and then this one is going to be $24. So you can buy a $24 blade to insert into your multi-tool with S35VN, so you don't have to buy the whole thing. And... Uh, Honestly, really nicely done. The grind's actually pretty even. The, considering how bad some of the grinds have been on Leatherman's that I've had, I had to return a TTI, in fact, with a grind so bad it was unusable. Uh, this is pretty solid. Um, how sharp is it? How sharp is it? Very. Wow. Wow. Wow, that is very sharp. Okay, I dig it. I dig it a lot. Nice, very well done. Okay, so um, here's something we, you don't see every day is a full-size hex bit driver, but they went ahead and went the extra mile. They put the magnet on the side here and it extends a little bit onto the inside of the cavity. And this lets you turn it into a useful, well, what am I trying to say? It can use the Weha double-sided bits. It can use the Leatherman bits and standard hex bits. So let me just show you so you don't just 
don't take my word for it. It's, let's go ahead and pull this out of the surge. Pull that out, put that in, and it goes right there, just like that. No problem. Sticks out almost perfectly, and it will work with the Weeha double-sided bits as well, and it will work with standard hex bits, I think. Let me get, hold on one second. Ah, yes, let's pirate one from the uh, center drive. Yeah, they go in a little bit lower, but they work. And they're not as going to be as quite as strong on the magnets as it would be normally. But what's great about having the magnet there is it's not going to damage the back of the tool. So when things get impacted, it's not going to shatter the magnet. And so this will last a lot longer. Speaking of that, these are purchasable independently and they're only nine bucks. So I think there's a chance I might get one or two of these and have it one on each side. Something you can do with this, which is kind of neat. All right, so let's put the other bit back in. It is two Phillips, which makes a lot of sense considering we have uh, a pair of flatheads over here. I like it. So uh, on this side, notice the blade comes above the lock mechanism. So you actually have to lift this to get this uh, unlocked and then you have to close it and then close it again. Um, a little more fiddly on this side. It's not quite perfect. Uh, and I think that a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's difficult to grab this implement. I just don't see a place, now maybe I'm missing it, where I should stick my finger to pull this thing out. The only real qualm so far that I have found with the implementation itself. And just like the center drive, it's trying to make that center axis bit driver. It's not as long, but it is a really cool consideration. It's one of the best things about the Gerber center drive. All right. I know this is going to be a long video, but we have to do it. Now let's go to the scissors. We have the surge out. So I think the opportunity is perfect to show you the comparison between the two. So let's put this bit back in. Here it is. All right, now let's take a look. Here's the crazy part. I want to I want to see if I can I can test this. I think this might be a bigger scissor than the one on the uh, surge. This isn't going to be the easiest, and it might be different points. Let me, let me open it all the way and let's do this. We'll open it all the way and I'll measure the, where it intersects the other cutting piece. I guess it's pretty much as big as that. 0.93. Okay. Give or take. There's actually no cutting edge there. So it's actually 0.87. So it's not, it's probably very close to the same. It may be a slightly longer here, but my guess is it's going to feel very similar. So from a thickness perspective and from a length perspective, this scissor is similar in size to the Leatherman Surge. That's impressive. We don't even need to pull the one out on the Wave, okay? We're definitely not pulling the dinky little one out on the MX Clip. Uh, <laughs> this is a substantially bigger scissor. And um, we will be doing a lot of testing with it. But I do want to do a couple of just, just a couple of things real quickly. So let's see how good is this? I, I got to know. And I think you guys want to know too. Okay, let's start with some basic ribbon with a little bit of pressure. No problem. Cuts right through. Clean. Very nice. Some seatbelt material. Wow. Wow. Wow, that is very, very clean. Okay, let's go to the Kevlar, shall we? Eh, a little bit more difficult, funny enough, but still doable for sure. Okay, there's that. Now, can it do the uncuttable? So almost nothing cuts this. This is Dyneema cord. It's very, very hard to cut. Did that just happen? No way. Okay, so it gets a one. Yeah, okay, all right. 
Okay, I was gonna be, I was gonna be like, no way it gets a two. Okay, so the way I do my ratings, I usually test both in the strong part and the weak part. It can't do it in the weak part, that's not surprising. Uh, what? Let me try that again. That's a fluke. That's not a fluke. No way. Okay, that's ridiculous. Wait, hold on. Hold it, hold it. Okay, try it again. Okay. Okay, so this could be, I'm gonna have to do a full gauntlet testing on this because it could be the best scissor we've had in a multi-tool. I cannot believe it can cut that on the end. That is insane. That's insane. I've never seen that. The only scissor who could do that was like a full-sized Klein. Okay, that's nuts. That is seriously nuts. Okay, anyway, let's move on. Gotta move on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so very cool. We got, okay, which one is this? This is the, the locking blade. So let me go ahead and switch out the blades again. Pretty straightforward, pull that out. Slot. Getting pretty good at this, I think. There you go, and then boom, we're in. And then we can push that down and we got, okay, there we go, boom. Very quick, easy to do. Now let's take a look at some of these other implements quickly. Let's get through it. I, I know we're already dragging past 20 minutes. So we have a three millimeter Allen and also five. One of the cool tricks, by the way, is if you stick a three and a five together like this, and because there's nothing in between them, you can actually make an eight millimeter wrench. Same thing with the two, millim the two millimeter. You can add the two and the five to get the seven, and you can actually use that in a seven millimeter hex hole. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, so let's keep going. Uh, file, another cool implementation. Also, can I say big thank you for actually sealing these? In, an airtight, in a watertight package because that way they won't develop any rust while they're sitting. And I really, really appreciate that. Not having it just loose in a box, but actually having it protected. So this is a three-sided file. Not bad, not bad grip. Straight cut's a little bit, nah, I don't know about the straight cut, man. Cross cut feels good. Cross cut feels okay. I'm underwhelmed. I'm underwhelmed by the file, but it is. Okay, we'll keep going. Underwhelmed. I don't know, after that scissor performance, I don't think I could uh, fault this so far, especially for its very first tool ever. Can opener, bottle opener combo, if that's your thing. It does not come standard in the tool. And this is actually one of my favorite things. This is this is a tool that I'm going to definitely have in my, my uh, tool quite often. Um, this is a safety cutter or strap cutter or package opener, depending on how you look at it. It's also going to be my replacement for the blade when um, we, when I'm in a place where I cannot carry a knife. So I can carry this, I mean, theoretically, theoretically, it can go on a plane because I can't get access to the edge, but I'm looking forward to testing this. I think it could be really good. I really like the sweep in there. Yeah, this is done. This is done pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, we have to test it. We have to test everything, but so far so good. Now, um, I don't think we're going to be able to fit changing out the adding the scales, but I want to show you what the deal is. Like, we're already running so far late, and there's going to be multiple videos. Don't worry, I will be posting a number of them over this week. Here's the scales, and here's what surprises me. Look at how thin these are. I thought they were going to be a lot thicker and therefore bulk up the tool a lot more, but these are essentially the same thickness as the tool itself. One thing I would have done though, I kind of like, I kind of like uh, a little stone wash finish, but hey, I'll take it. These are nice and thin and they come with those uh, countersunk screws. So I think it's not going to change the thick, the overall thickness if you're looking at it from the thickness of the screws themselves. Like right here at the pivot, you know, if you exchange these for countersunk, it makes sense. It's not going to make much of a difference in, 
in, in uh, thickness from there. So I don't see a reason not to use scales. And these come with titanium. You can buy brass. Yeah, I don't care. The patina is going to happen, so we're going to just go for it. I want patina on my brass scales. That's the whole point. Dude, that's sick. And these are actually available in format that you can actually download. You can make 3D printed ones and you can get them, you know, CNC made different materials, wood, whatever you want to do. Okay. That's really cool. And I don't see a reason why the scales have to be this thin. I mean, if you want to, you can make the scales as thick as you want, but I'm pretty impressed. Uh, this is a new tool platform that I've never seen before. Okay, it just doesn't exist until now. And this is, I can't believe it's even here. It feels, yeah, it feels surreal. But this feels like that moment, and it might be wrong. I could be wrong. We'll find out in a couple years from now. I feel like this is that moment when people got introduced to the Apple phone, like the these first generation smartphones, and everyone was using things like Blackberries. This feels like such a, a jump up in customization, user interface, if you will. I, I just, I just have, it feels like this has so much potential. How good it's going to be is going to take a lot more time than this one video. I'm gonna be releasing a lot more content on this over the next couple of days, weeks, but so far I am really pleased at what I'm seeing. I did not expect everything to be correct. I don't see how it could be. It's the first time this has been done. So really, really well done by Goat Tools. Yeah, stick around. There's gonna be a lot more coming.